Are you wondering if it's your nutrition that's causing your training problems? Today, we're going to take a look at the top 5 most common signs you can ride faster by improving your on-bike fueling and hydration. Sometimes a few of these get chalked up to reasons outside of nutrition. If you find yourself doing that, you might want to just take a quick double check that it's not your fuel and hydration that's holding you back. Without further ado, number 5. Inconsistent performance. If your race performance lags behind what your training says you should be able to do, or if key training sessions always seem to be where you fail, it might be your fuel and hydration approach on the bike. If that's you, your inconsistent performance could be coming from not enough blood sugar or drops in blood volume due to dehydration, both of which are common results of improper fueling. Inconsistent performance is our first sign that we should give a little more focus to our on-the-bike fueling. Number four, my personal favorite, cramping. While the academic debate rages on about the very specific causes and mechanisms of muscle cramps, virtually every academic agrees that the answer is either muscle fatigue or electrolyte issues, or some combination of the two. And since both fatigue and electrolyte problems can be improved with better fueling, if you know someone who suffers from cramping, while it may not specifically be an electrolyte problem, their cramps can almost certainly be improved or eliminated with better fuel and hydration. The next one is an obvious one, but has much bigger consequences than many people give it credit for. Got dry mouth? Can't swallow your gel? Or maybe you're dreaming of the next gas station five miles up the road. Thirst is our number three sign that you could be riding faster by improving your fuel and hydration. Every time I talk about thirst on video, I get dry mouth. Psychology is powerful. You get thirsty when your body realizes that it's running low on water. Thirst is a really bad sign if it's anything more than mild thirst that can quickly and fully be quenched by a quick sip from your bottle. If you're ever experiencing more thirst than that in your training or racing, you're guaranteed to be able to ride faster, easier, if you fix your hydration strategy, specifically your sodium and water intake. All right, we're one step away from number one. Our number two is cardiac drift. What is cardiac drift? It's when you're riding along at a steady power output and over time your heart rate goes higher and higher for the same power output. Related to aerobic decoupling, and sometimes called heart rate decoupling, it's often misconstrued as being caused by insufficient or bad training. The truth is, whenever you're training at any power below about 20 minute power, your heart's primary reason for beating faster or experiencing cardiac drift while your power stays the same is dehydration. Dehydration during riding happens because of sweat loss. Specifically, sweat loss not being matched by water consumption or insufficient sodium intake to convince your blood vessels to hang on to the water you're consuming. To check if you have this, watch your heart rate compared to your power on your next long ride. If your heart rate drifts up while your power is level, or if your heart rate stays the same while your power goes down, you've probably got fluid or sodium intake issues. Both water and sodium affect hydration. They work together to maintain blood volume, and an absence of either of them can cause cardiac drift. If you want more information on how much sodium you should intake to avoid cardiac drift, check out our How Much Sodium to Go Faster video. Number one on our list of signs that you can ride faster by improving your on-bike fueling and hydration may come as no surprise to you veterans. It is fading performance. If you kill it in the short punchy group rides or you're pretty okay for a 20 minute threshold effort and then fade later, or maybe you can hang with the front pack for the first big climb but then you get dropped when the road goes uphill again later in the ride, it's probably at least related to your fuel and hydration strategy. If you're strong for a 20 minute power but your 3 hour power or your performance in something like a multi hour gravel race fades hard toward the end or the middle of the race, it's very likely more related to your nutrition than your fitness. Make no mistake, extremely high fitness could absolutely carry you longer, faster, further and without as much performance drop and probably with even less fuel and there's lots of folks that do that but you only have the fitness you have and people are often amazed at how hard they can go four or even eight hours into a big event when they absolutely nail their fueling and hydration strategy so why is preventing fading performance on long rides so fixable with just better fuel and hydration and why isn't everyone doing it already that's a good question I think the answer is, the fitness required for efforts under an hour is very similar to long distance races. It's aerobic. Sure, there's nuance, but lots of coaches are just overly fascinated with working to enhance tiny differences in various components of aerobic fitness with fancy training strategies. The truth is, most fading performance has to do with inadequate or improper fuel and hydration strategy and not a more optimized training strategy or fancy periodization. The reason there are so many people trying to sell fancy training plans and not focusing on fixing fueling is because fueling is complex to help someone truly optimize if that's not your area of expertise. Sure, there are great general fuel guidelines out there, but there are so many potholes along the way that people just get lost and end up defaulting to buying another product and hoping it works this time or spending hours online trying to sort out exactly what to do, or worse, hiring people like Michelle and I who write fueling plans as a profession, and they spend way too much money on folks like us. 
If you're fading as the clock ticks on, it's almost guaranteed to be fuel and hydration related and not a training or mental toughness problem, although it can absolutely feel like one. If fixing fading performance is one of your goals, then give some honest thought to your ride fuel and hydration. There's a reason the professional cyclists have detailed gram by gram nutrition plans at all the big stages. There's a reason they have PhDs in sport writing these plans and putting fuel in their bottles. They have team nutritionists to make all the decisions for them. If you think it would be cool to experience that level of optimization, Michelle and I did too. Michelle and I have been working literally day and night on putting together an app that delivers exactly that. Custom fueling for each of your training sessions based on the latest scientific research. We've developed a database of recommended products to choose from paired with our customization process, which we have tirelessly and ruthlessly simplified. The app also has a growing amount of automation so that eventually we hope to make it feel like every day you just have a nutrition coach in your kitchen making your bottles for you. Our mission is to democratize pro fuel and hydration and make it simple enough that even the most time-crunched cyclist can use it, because it actually saves them time. We're still a small channel, but the feedback you all have been providing has been tremendous and humbling. I appreciate your private messages on places like the Trainer Road Forum and the Slow Twitch Forum. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to know more about anything or any problems that you need help solving. Um, my hope is that this video is um, able to convince a few more folks that a lot of their problems can be solved with a little look into their fuel and hydration strategy. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.